Wake up in the morning, love. And the sunlight hurts my eyes. Hey, yep. Hey, Mike. There's something without warning, love. Bears heavy on my mind. Then I look at you. And the world's yeah, Mike, I must alert you to the fact that you're eating your cereal shirtless. Also pantsless. Okay. Did you have any chance slip in the tub this morning? Relax, Ed. I like eating breakfast before I get dressed. Is that right? Until you moved in, I did it all the time. Now, uh, you've lived here a few months, I figure you're one of the family. Mike? What, honey? Oh, my God. You see me naked, Ed see me naked. It's a big deal. We haven't seen you naked at the same time. Why should that matter? Mike, it just does. Look, you guys... Maybe it's time I found my own place. You know, I can only imagine how difficult it must be having a new baby and a house guest at the same time. And I don't want to abuse your hospitality here, so yeah, I got the whole weekend here. I can start looking right away. Ed, don't be ridiculous. We love having you here. That's right, Eddie. Really. Please, stay as long as you want to. Really? really? You guys mean that? I mean, that's great, because I got to admit, I wasn't that easy. Ed, this is the part you're supposed to insist on moving out, no matter how much we protest. Okay, Mike? Nancy? I'm moving out. Please stay. Don't go. I insist. All right. Okay. Play for Duke, but I'd sure like to find brand new kitchen, washer, dryer, screened in patio. Hmm. What do you think, Ken? How would you define the word id? It, id? Uh, well, I, um, it's been a while since I took Psych 101, but I, I believe Freud said that the three components of the human psyche were the, the id, the ego, and the superego. The id being the subconscious part that deals with urges and drives. You know, sex, hunger, and things like that. Why, what are you reading? The Wizard of Id. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> Two bedrooms, high ceilings, southern exposure. Oh, I love that show. That moose, he was always up to no good. Kenny, that was northern exposure. I don't think so. Bosco, yeah. I need your full attention. I have a business proposal. Okay, look, I know all about your business proposal. The answer is still no. I do not want to hold cockfights in the basement. Forget about that. This is better. It'll bring in busloads of customers, and at what cost to us? Say it with me. Zots. I'm not. I, I, what's the idea? Open mic night. Think about it. Free admission, ten drink minimum. Okay, eight drink. No, nine drink. Nine drink. You, you really think people come here and perform? Bosco. Of all the golden calves worshipped in this godless country, none has so seductive a moo as celebrity. I mean, take Kenny over there. He's an amateur stand-up comic. Kenny? Whenever I'm on an elevator and it's stopping on every floor, I turn to the guy next to me and say, What is this? Local? <laughs> <laughs> he's quirky, he's winning, and, and Shirley over there. Shirley's no stranger to the limelight. Shirley? Once I went to SeaWorld, and the lady at the sea lion show asked for an assistant, and I got picked, and I stood up in front of everybody, and I fed the sea lion a fish, and the lady asked me to take a bow, and while I was bowing, the sea lion bit me in the ASS. How about that? Hey, guys. Well, hey, Molly. Hi. Um, Ed, I, I need to ask you a favor. Sure. Okay. Uh, so. So, uh... It's about my grandfather. You met him at Thanksgiving. Actually, I met him way before that. Back when he owned and operated Charlie's Pet Shop. You bought a pet for my grandfather? My first one. A turtle. Poor little guy choked to death on a jewel. A, a jewel? No, a jewel. Gum with the squirty stuff inside. Oh, <laughs> right, right. The thing is, Ed, um, 
Charlie's not doing so well lately. The, the doctors say that we might not have him around much longer. Oh, my. I'm sorry to hear that. He, he wants to put together... <sighs> wow. It's a little tough to talk about. <sighs> he, he wants to um, put together his will, so I thought maybe if you weren't too busy... Say no then... more. I'll get right on that. <sighs> Great. Great. And you're going to get a kick out of Charlie. Now, just don't let him talk your ear off about his swinging bachelor days. You wild man? Oh, Molly, did I ever tell you about the time I nailed the butter-churning lady at Colonial Williamsburg? Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm looking forward to this already. Thanks, Ed. It means a lot to me. Morning, Wendy. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, nothing, Dr. Burton. I don't know, it looks, looks like you're trying to hold back a laugh. I was just thinking about an old episode of Night Court. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, you must be Dr. Burton. Yeah, yeah, I am. Who are you? Scott Benson. Hey, call me Dr. Scotty. My patients seem to like the informality. Yeah, it helps me relate to you. <laughs> why are you why are you seeing my patient, Dr. Uh, Dr. Scotty? Well, you were a couple six minutes late, so thought I'd cover for you. Hey, could you pass me the tongue delighters? Tongue delighters? Well, we don't want to depress our patients now, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Warren, I realize it's Saturday, but weekday rules still apply. That means you student, me teacher, you Warren, me Miss Bessie. No, oh, I understand. Because we have to keep up appearances. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like we're in dangerous liaisons. Hey, Cal. Ed. Is this guy bothering you? Say the word and I'll throw down. Warren. How you doing? Hey, you play that guitar? We're going to have an open mic night at Stucky Bowl. Are you going to be there? I might. All right, thanks, tough guy. I owe you a solid. Sure. Right. Peace out. Goodbye, Warren. All right, Mr. Wesley. House hunting, huh? Yeah. So, Mike and Nancy finally kicked you out. Okay, they didn't kick me out. Okay, they, what they did was they... they kicked you out. That's right. They're like, why don't you join me? I could use a woman's perspective. What do you mean? Oh, you can help me find a happening pair that looks like the happening lady. Ah, I have a tip for you. What's that? Look for a place with a grotto. A <laughs> grotto. Hey, you know what I realized? This will be the first time in my life I've lived alone, you know? I mean, obviously, I grew up with my parents, and then I had roommates all through college and law school, and then came Liz. You guys lived together before you were married? Yep, yep. It's just, it's just me, Liz, and Chrissy. Who's Chrissy? Oh, this nutty blonde chick. We had to tell the landlord I was gay. Oh. It was a mad guy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Ed Stevens. I'm in the market for a house. Oh, I'm Dana Jarvis. Hi. Let me guess. Newlyweds. Yes. Yes. Is it really that obvious? We're not married. She's not well. Ed. Yes, dear. Why don't you tell me what kind of home you're looking for? <clears throat> Mrs. Jarvis, I need you to understand something. I lived in New York City. I have a lot of experience with real estate agents. I know how this works. And how's that, Mr. Stevens? Instead of you showing me a place you think I really like, you show me a really bad one. So I lower my expectations, and then you can sell me pretty much anything. Sound familiar? Yes, I suppose it does. Then why don't we save ourselves some time and energy, skip the bad house, go straight to the good ones. All right, Mr. Stevens. By tomorrow morning, I will have a list of wonderful homes to show you. Very good. Will you be joining us, Mrs. Stevens? I'm not, Mrs. Stevens. She was hit on the head with a falling coconut. Boink. Come in. <clears throat> Dr. Jerome, what's going on? Many things, Dr. Burton, many things. The universe is expanding, the art of cinema is dying, and my daughter Melissa is marrying a Moroccan. The man wears a fez. What's the new doctor doing here? Oh, yes, Dr. Scotty. I've invited him to join the practice. Why? We don't, we don't need another doctor. You, you and I can handle all the patients, Dr. Jerome. Dr. Burton, take my hand. 
Feel it. What was once a limber, supple instrument of healing now grows withered, leathery, and stiff. My day of retirement looms ever closer, and I want to make sure that this practice is left in the right hands. But when I took this job, Dr. Jerome, it was with the understanding that you leave the practice to me. You, Dr. Burton, are what was known in the grunge rock era of the early 90s as a slacker. Really? So I believe I owe it to my patients to see if Dr. Scotty can do better. Thanks for the chat. <clears throat> I was expecting the Indian food guy. Oh, sorry, it's me, Ed Stevens. Um, Molly said that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You, uh, you like Indian food, don't you, Jerry? It's Ed, actually. I'll be calling you Jerry. It's more fun to say. Come inside. <laughs> well, do you like the samosas, or Jerry? The, 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 the pakoras, the lamb biryani, huh? The onion culture. Sure. Do you like tandoori chicken, huh? Tandoori chicken, huh? Yeah, it's tasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, all right, sit down. Okay. Go, sit over there. Well, at first I wasn't sure about the whole bowling alley lawyer thing, but then I figured, <clears throat> well, it's only my last will and testament. Don't worry, Mr. Hudson. I, I promise I will do as good. I know you will, Jerry. Well, let's get down to it. Sure. Yes. Um, well, there are lots of options when it comes to drawing up a will. Uh, the point is, of course, to minimize the tax burdens. Well, so look, look, just take all my stuff and divvy it up among my survivors. Okay. Okay. And who might those survivors be? My son, daughter-in-law, one niece, two nephews, Molly, of course. <laughs> Say, do you like beefaroni? Yeah. I bought a couple dozen cases of the stuff. In preparation for Y2K, I'm leaving it all to you. Oh, thanks. Th thanks. Um, <clears throat> is, is there anyone else we might be missing? Ron. Ron. And he would be? My lover. Hmm? Wait till you taste this chicken vindaloo. You'll have fireworks shooting out your ass. Why is our house the newest teen? Can I bounce a joke off you, Chief? Oh, yeah, Kenny. <laughs> Open mic night, absolutely. <clears throat> Jewish astronaut comes back from a month-long space shuttle mission where he orbits the Earth every four hours. A reporter asked him, how do you feel? He says, I'm exhausted. Do you know how many times I had to say Shachris, Mirka, and Mariv? What's that even mean? Something hilarious. Where'd you get that joke? Made it up, Kenny. Kenny, just a thought, but maybe you might want to think about taking your act in a, a less Hebraic direction. Thanks, Chief. You're a great sounding board. My pleasure. Hi, Ed. Oh, hey, hi, Molly. How are you? Good. Good. What you doing? I'm working on Charlie's will. I, I, I saw him yesterday. Yeah, he told me. He liked you. <laughs> well. So, um, how'd it go from your side? Uh, good. Good. I'd say it went pretty well. Good. They moved him into the hospital this morning. Really? Why? He seemed fine. Oh, <laughs> Charlie puts up a good friend. He just doesn't want anybody to feel sorry for him. Right. Hey, Molly, <clears throat> did, did Charlie ever tell you a, a surprising personal fact about himself? What do you mean? Well, you know, a, a fact <clears throat> about himself, a personal one, that when he told you, you, you were surprised. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. In 1952, he was hitchhiking and got picked up by Zeppo Marx. Really? That wasn't it. Oh, no, that was it. That was it. I know. When you told me that, I was, I was bowled over. I mean, of all the Marx brothers we picked up by. <laughs> you get picked up by Zeppo, that's... Ed, <laughs> is everything okay? Yeah, it's fine. Phil! Pretty sweet, huh? Phil. 
Do not want you gonging the performers. Fine, fine. We'll just move on to plan B. No giant hooks either. Right down here, Mr. Harris. Mrs. Andrews, I have your test results. And? We seem to have caught it just in time. Oh. You're going to be fine, Mrs. Andrews. Oh. You're going to live a long and healthy life. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank oh. you, Dr. Scotty. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. No, no, don't be silly. Have a lollipop. Oh. oh, that's so happy. I'm so happy. I'm happy for you, Mrs. Thank Andrews. You. This is exciting. I'm going to have my own garage. I'm going to have my own backyard. I have my own fireplace. Hey, Carol, what's your take on bearskin rugs? I think they look good on bears. Nice call. <laughs> All right, kids, here we are. The perfect place for the two of you to start a family. Okay, Mrs. Jarvis. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought you said we were going to skip the part where you showed me the bad house. We did. This is obviously the bad house. No, it's not. Prove it. What do you mean? Take me to a place on your list that's worse than this house. If you can't, I'm getting a new realtor. But Mr. Stevens. Right now. Let's go. Honey? Honey? Well, Mr. Harris, I've got excellent news. What's that? It's taken several weeks of treatment, but I'm happy to tell you that your athlete's foot has been cured. Oh, good. Oh, yes, Mr. Harris, I have eradicated your athlete's foot. Goodbye itching, goodbye redness, goodbye cracked skin. You, sir, are going to live a long and healthy life. Why are you shouting? Come here, you magnificent bastard. All right, there you are. What did I tell you? Miss Jarvis, this house is much nicer than the one we just saw. No, it's not. It's awful. Just listen. To what? Train. There's no train. And just look at those windows. What's wrong with them? The windows and the door make the eyes and the mouth of a mean face. <gasps> hey, she's right. Miss Jarvis, you are no longer my real estate agent. Let's go, Carol. Smell that? We're right downwind of a glue factory. Honey, yeah, I just don't get it. He told you two years ago that you'd inherit the practice. Yeah, I know. I know, it's ridiculous. But what can I do? Well, I think you should talk to him. Honey, last time I tried talking to him, he tore me a new ass. I Tushy. Tore me a new tushy. Why don't you explain your situation to Dr. Scotty? He may not even realize that he's stealing your job. That's true. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Hey, hey, Edward. So, how's the house hunting going? Oh, it's great. I'll have a house in no time. We have yet to set foot inside a house. <laughs> hey, Ed, ten bucks if you give your order to the waitress in rhyme. Oh, God. What can I get you, folks? Well, Ed, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and get us started? Uh -huh. Okay, let's see, what, uh, what, what beverage will I have? Let's see, um, how about a uh, frosty glass of your iced tea? And, um, then to start for my appetizer, I would like the gravy fries. Or maybe I'll have my fries with cheese, yes. I change my order, if you please. And, uh, after that, well, for my main course, I will have the tuna melt, of course. And you can't ram course with course. Mm. <laughs> and perhaps a side of horse. A side of horse. Protein. Dr. Roberts, Dr. Phoebe Roberts, please call 301. Dr. Roberts, call 301. Molly, I really wish you'd stop bringing me presents. I don't like you spending your money on me. Grandpa, I think you're forgetting something. I'm a high school teacher. I am rich beyond your wildest imagination. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> well, what have we here? Oh, oh, look at this. A brand new photo album. You like oh, it? Look at this. What a coincidence. It came filled with photos of me and my family. <laughs> what are the odds of that, Molly? It's like an episode out of Twilight Zone. <laughs> new Year's Day, 1965. Look at your grandmother. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like you, except for that god-awful beehive hair, dude. Did I ever tell you about the time it caught fire? Yes, sir, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I miss her. You know, Molly, life's a lot more fun if you've got someone to share it with. Yeah, well, 
It's finding that right someone that's the tough part. Well, the way you talk about that Ed Stevens, I figured maybe you had. Grandpa. Oh, Molly, <sighs> have you ever been able to keep a secret from me? There are no secrets between Molly and Charlie Hudson. Yes. Hmm. What's the matter? Ah, Kara. Hi. 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 And Jerry. Oh, my God. A lawyer in a bowling shirt. <laughs> the world's gone to hell. Oh, I brought you some cupcakes, but maybe... No, 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 no. Just plop them in the IV bag. They'll dissolve. <laughs> How are you feeling? Is there anything we can do for you? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. But, um, listen, why, why don't you girls give me and Jerry uh, uh, just a couple of minutes to talk? Huh? Okay. okay. Uh, see you later, then. Well, this will be quick, Mr. Hudson. Uh -huh. Just have you initial every page where there's an X, and then sign at the end, uh, and right. I'll be your witness. I suppose you've been wondering about me and Ron? I can assure you, Mr. Hudson, I have no problem with that. It took me a long time to get used to it, I can tell you. I was a world-class skirt chaser until my wife Eileen came along. Is that right? Married 35 years. Yeah. Loved her with all my heart. When she passed, I, I was lost. Then one day, I'm, uh, I'm having a beer over at the Smiling Goat, and Ron walks in. Pulls up a stool, we get to talking. Turns out, he's a widower, too. So. We start spending some time together. You know, fishing, playing cards, that kind of thing. And then out of a clear blue sky, it just happened. Damnedest thing, ain't it? I suppose that qualifies as the damnedest. <laughs> and Charlie certainly did get along well. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Mm -hmm. So what about you and Ed? I mean, what's the deal? What deal? Well, you're picking pumpkins on Thanksgiving and you're house hunting together. That deal. We're just hanging out. There is no deal. Right. Malls, look, I know it's hard to believe, but we've actually settled into a very comfortable relationship just as friends. So you have no interest whatsoever in pursuing a romantic relationship with Edward J. Stevens? Absolutely not. Why? I'm just curious. You know, and, well, now that you've satisfied my curiosity, let's just talk about something else. Let's, you know, like, sherbet. Sherbet? Have you ever noticed that people actually pronounce it sherbert? But it's not. You know, it's sherbet. No second R. No second R. One of those things. Jerry, you're the only one in the world who knows about me and Ron. <clears throat> Except Ron, of course. I think he has a hunch. Uh, uh, fact is, uh, there are people in my family that just wouldn't accept it. You don't have to worry about me, Mr. Hudson. Anything you tell me stays in this room. My son George, for example. A uh, real man's man. Just like his pop. Uh, if he knew about Ron, he'd never look at me the same way again. I understand. So, here's the question I ask myself a thousand times a day. Should I take my little secret to the grave, or should I tell everybody and consequences be damned? Hmm? You're, um, you asking my opinion? No, I'm asking the Sheik of Araby. Ah, oh. well, it's a, it's a personal decision, of course, Mr. Hudson, but I'd say you have a right to your privacy. Yes, I, I know that, Jerry, but I, I've also got the right to pass on without feeling like I had something to hide. God, it'd be great to just go ahead and tell him and be done with it. Then maybe you should. Uh, maybe I should. Jerry, I'm gonna do it. Would you arrange a family gathering for me? Of course. Thank you. Dr. Scott, you mind if I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure thing, Dr. Mike. <laughs> It's plain Mike will do. Oh, trust me on this one. You'll double your tips. Look, here's the story. I've been working for Dr. Jerome for two years. And to tell you the truth between you and me, sometimes the guy can be a bit of a cranky bastard. What's kept me sane these past 24 months is the knowledge that when he retires, I take over the practice. Now, Dr. Scotty, I don't know where you came from 
who you are, or what you want, but I'm asking for your sympathy. Don't take this away from me. Tell Dr. Jerome you don't want the practice. No problem. Consider it done. Really? Yeah. Look, if I'd known I was going to be stepping on toes, I never would have taken this job in the first place. <laughs> well, you're, you're a decent guy, <laughs> Dr. Scotty. Thank you. Hey, you know, my good friends call me Dr. Scott Hey, right, well, try me again when I'm drunk. You got it. Yeah. Okay, Leonard, we look forward to seeing you Friday night. Just a reminder, the pigeons need to be housed. We cannot provide housing for the pigeons. Next, please. Your name? Godfrey Clemens. And what is that? A loot. Okay, are you like a hobbit or something? This is an upscale evening of classy entertainment. We're gonna have to pass. But it's just an open mic night. That's right, and Broadway is just a street. Next, please. We're in Cheswick. That is a hot stage name. What's your real name? Warren Cheswick. Finally, someone with a sense of showmanship. I've got a band, the Warren Cheswick Experience. That is so original. Thanks. I'll allow you to perform under one condition. Righteous. Yeah, sure, anything. I sing lead. Hi, Mike. Hi, Ed. Um, this is my dad, George. Hi, oh, yeah. George. And my mom, Helen. Hello. This is Ed Stevens. We're worried, Mr. Stevens. Could you give us some idea what this is about? I'm afraid I can't, Mrs. Hudson. Don't tell me. He's banging a nurse. I'm so sorry to have to tell you this, but... What is it? Mr. Hudson just passed away. Oh, no. Oh, my. Come in, laser breath. <laughs> yes, Mark, this is Orson. What have you learned this week? Well, I experienced a strange new emotion. Here on Earth, they call it love. It's good. You know, you might want to dial down that Morth factor just a tad. Gotcha. Hey, Bosco, nice suit. If you're going to a funeral. Phil, I am going to a funeral. Oh. Carol. I'm facing an ethical dilemma. What's that? Suppose somebody had a secret, and they wanted to tell the secret, but for some reason they couldn't, and you're the only other person that knows about the secret. And so now the only way it gets told is if you tell it, but A, it's not your secret to tell, and B, there's certain people who'd rather not hear about it. Who has the secret? I can't tell you that. Ed. What? If you want my help, you're really going to have to be more specific. Uh, right, look, but if I tell you this thing, then you have to promise that it stays strictly between us. Okay. Forever. Okay. Charlie Hudson was gay. What? <laughs> no way. Yep. Well, what about Molly's grandmother? What about what about the time he nailed the butter-churning lady in Colonial Williamsburg? Well, it's, it's a long story, but basically, he's been in a relationship with this guy named Ron for a few years now, and he wanted to tell his family. He just he died before he got the chance. Wow. Yeah. Does Molly know? No. Nobody does. So what do I do now? You're sure he wanted everyone to know? He told me so himself. Well, then I guess... I guess you have an announcement to make. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could just flip for it. You know, heads I tell it, tails you tell it. What do you think about that? Or straws. We could draw straws. Straws. Do you have any straws on you? No. Ed. Oh, George. Everybody's being so wonderful. Your father had so many people who loved him. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, Mark. Thanks for coming. You can, um, you can just leave your coats over there. Malls. I'm so sorry. Thanks. Sweetie. He's a terrific guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was. You know, Ed, um, I, I don't want to waste any more of your time with the will, so... I was thinking that we could just do the reading tonight at the reception. Well, there's no hurry. Um, 
In fact, the will isn't officially filed yet. So we could wait. Yeah, we better do it tonight before everyone leaves town. Okay. Okay. Go talk to my parents. Yeah. Excuse me, did you by any chance know Mr. Hudson? I mean, of course you know him, otherwise you probably wouldn't be here. But... Sorry, do I know you? I'm Ed Stevens, Mr. Hudson's attorney. Ron Jeffries, friend. That's what I guessed. Guessed what? That you were a friend. Or a business partner. Oh. Or something else. Maybe a war buddy. Perhaps you played together in the high school band. He was first trombone, you were second trombone. Or not to imply anything about your relative trombone playing abilities. You could have been first trombone, but... He told you? Yes. Ron, I'm, I'm deeply sorry for your loss. Did he tell anyone else? No. Good. Nice to meet you, Ed. Excuse me, Ron. I'm, I'm sorry. There's something I really need to discuss with you. What's that? Right before Charlie died, he was planning on telling his family about your relationship. Now that he's gone, I was considering telling him myself, but I thought it might make more sense coming from you. Ed, do you know how hard it is to have to hide the fact that you love somebody? No, sir, I, I guess I really don't. I wanted to tell my family about me and Charlie for years. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Call me a coward. Sir, I don't think you're a coward. If Charlie wants his people to know, I say, go ahead, tell them. But I can't be there. I'm sorry, I just can't be there. Yes! Yeah, boys! We blew the roof off that mother! Something like that. All right, let's do it again. One more time. Harold. No. I refuse to waste another nanosecond of my life learning a song, and I use that term loosely, written by a bowling alley shoe guy. Come on, Gavin. This is our first public performance. You think a little group called the Beatles ever hit the stage before they were ready? The only reason I'm in this group is that you swore to me that we'd never compromise our creative vision. No, Gavin, the only reason you're in this group is because you got a Casio tone for your bar mitzvah. Harold! Before we begin the actual reading of the will, I have an announcement to make. I didn't know Charlie Hudson very long, a few days, in fact. But in that short time, I came to realize that he was a, a special guy. Here, here. Caring, loving, brave. And funny. <laughs> and handsome. <laughs> Gay. So on to the will. I, Charles Hudson, being of sound mind. Son, mm -hmm. would you mind repeating that last bit of business? Sir. Your father wanted you to know that he was a gay, a homosexual. And he intended to tell you himself, but, but he... So that left me. Questions? Comments? Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Jeffries, Charlie's partner. Well, I see you've brought a meatloaf. It's a Cajun meatloaf. Dr. Drew.
Jerome, uh, I have here a project I've been working on in my spare time as a, uh, as a gesture of goodwill. Uh, it's a cross-reference study of every patient in the history of your 38 years practicing medicine in Stuckeyville. Yeah, yeah. And by looking at these files, you can learn how illnesses spread throughout the community, success rates of various forms of treatment. Dr. Jerome? <clears throat> I'm sorry, Dr. Burton. I'm a bit distracted. Dr. Scotty here connected my computer to a worldwide community of physicians who help each other online. Yeah, say hello to Dr. Nilanta Nanayakara. He's in Sri Lanka. How you doing, Nilanta? Hello, America! Now this is a man with initiative. This is a man who's ready to run a practice. Malls. I'm so sorry I ducked out on you last night. I just, I know. Ed, yeah. Um, I would love to. Oh, I'll leave you guys alone. Please. I came here to thank you. Really? My grandfather meant more to me than anyone in the world. In a lot of ways, we were best friends. The fact that he had to hide from me, well, it was very upsetting. But to know that he was gonna come out with the truth makes it all better. But your family's- Oh, no, they'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, some of them aren't the most forward-thinking people in the world, but hey, it's their problem. Well, I'm glad you're not angry with me. Not at all. In, in fact, I, I, know, I know this is going to sound kind of corny, but um, I actually feel like I learned something from you and Charlie. What's that? Well, that you're better off not hiding who you are or how you feel, and if you've got something to say, just say it. <laughs> you know, Molly, you never struck me as a person that leaves much unsaid. Oh, Ed, you'd be so surprised. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, okay, for starters, uh... I've always found myself strangely attracted to Carl Malden. Carl Malden? Yeah, there's just something about that nose. It's big. You lied to me, Dr. Scotty. You stood there with a straight face, and you said you were going to tell Dr. Jerome you didn't want the practice. Well, Dr. Mike, do you really think doctors should always tell the truth? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Everyone should tell the truth. Isn't that like the Third Commandment or the Sixth Amendment or something? Doesn't everyone know that from the time they can walk? So, if you have a patient with a 5% chance of survival, but you know that 5% will drop down to 2% if he loses hope, you'll still be completely honest with that patient? Yes. Huh. Yes. Well, not necessarily, but what does that have to do with anything we're Let talking about? Let him off the hook, Dr. Scotty. What hook? I'm not really joining this practice. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, what? He works for a friend of mine in Jasper Town. I brought him down here for a week just to motivate you, Dr. Burton. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> just look at you, sweating like a monkey in a steam room. Wait, 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 wait. So, this, wait so this whole thing is just, it's a joke? He's not really, it was an act? The whole Dr. Scotty thing, I have a tongue delighter? You were, you were just doing a bit? Faking your whole personality? No, this is my real personality. How can you do this, Dr. Jerome? I don't know, Dr. Burton. I guess I'm just a cranky bastard. Do you play basketball? My friends and I have a Thursday night game. That's great. So, um, are you still looking for a house? I sure am. Because I just happen to know one that's available. Charlie's place. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's got everything that you're looking for. Plus, you know, it'd be nice to kind of keep it in the family. Right, right. Well, thanks, Molly. You know, I, I might just take you up on that. Excuse me. I've got 72 cases of beefaroni for a Mr. Jerry Stevens. Kenny, come on, just let us in. Sorry, can't help you, ma'am. Her, her, him. Come on, Kenny. 
You're gonna have to wait. We got too many guys right now. Sorry, honey. Mikey, Matt. All right, people. If you are in the splash zone, now is the time to cover up. Cheswick experience featuring guest vocalist Phil Stubb. Shouldn't hide their feelings. Mm -hmm. I was so wrong. <laughs> I have a goldie! 